Remember video game demos? Congratulations on being born before 1990 and a lifetime of avoiding a traumatic head injury. Unfortunately, aside from the studio that brought us Zumba World Party and a handful of others, video game developers seem to have largely forgotten about game demos. That, or they only let you play them twice before barring your account from having another go. Objection! Perhaps turned off by the cost of putting them together in the first place, or perhaps by research that reportedly suggests that releasing a demo can actually reduce the number of games a developer sells by up to half, demos are quickly going the way of the pinguinus in penis, hunted to extinction by fishermen for their valuable meat. Anyway, point is, the greatest playable video game demonstrations of all time are probably behind us. Bummer, right? But let's reflect on the good times, brush aside those tears and let us ruminate on six of the greatest playable video game demonstrations of all time. Number six is a demo that changed the way gamers looked at game demos forever, the demo for the original Metal Gear Solid. The Metal Gear Solid demo kicked off at the very beginning of the game, taking players from the first container-filled basement below the Shadow Moses facility, through a couple of hangars and into several dark air ducts. TV dinner feels like. Ending in DARPA Chief Donald Anderson's prison cell, the demo did a good job of introducing several of the main characters and setting up the central plot, and it was totally gripping despite the fact that brief gameplay sections were broken up with 20 minutes of cutscenes and coded conversations about how Alaskan field mice don't hibernate. Wild field mice don't have a thick layer of fat. Fascinating! Please tell me more about mice fat, I'm fairly confident the nuclear warhead aimed at Washington DC will probably disarm itself. <laughs> Of course, at the time, the way in which the Metal Gear Solid demo weaved its in-engine cutscenes with its gameplay was revolutionary, even though the PlayStation couldn't produce enough polygons to give anyone lips. Sweet Jesus. Ending on the mysterious and sudden death of DARPA Chief Anderson, an event Snake seemed to process with the emotional reaction of a man who had just noted his watch had stopped. <sighs> Dead. About the only thing this demo didn't give you was an excuse not for running out and buying the game immediately. <laughs> Number 5 is the incredibly confident demo for Just Cause, a game that set players loose in an enormous tropical paradise as a South American super spy who had a very minimal understanding of the laws of physics and even less interest in actually obeying them. <coughs> the Just Cause demo was notable as our initial introduction to Rico Rodriguez, the result of what would happen if James Bond and Enrique Iglesias were able to defy logic and have a baby, <laughs> then gave him a grappling hook and a backpack full of parachutes. It was also notable for packing in more insane action across the several demo objectives than some games manage in their entire durations. <laughs> from the moment they shove you out of a chopper to hijack your first target's vehicle from the air, to the final jump across an exploding bridge, the demo for the original Just Cause was a vast, wall-to-wall -wall action experience that never let up. It was a smorgasbord of everything Just Cause was going to offer, with chases across air, sea and land. Either way, the end result was a demo that was truly one louder than the rest. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? Number four is another relic from the era when demos used to come on compact discs with video game magazines attached to the back of them. Video game magazines are a lot like video game websites, only they're made out of trees. Back in its early years before it became a free-to-play Temple Run clone, Bogus. the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater series was kind of awesome and kind of a big deal. The demo for Tony Hawk's 2, however, is memorable for coming with a hefty sampler of the game's awesome park editor mode. It was absurd how much fun you could glean from this one demo, building your own personal skate parks. There was literally weeks of entertainment here, or approximately a lifetime longer than anybody wanted to play Tony Hawk Ride. I just want you to know I hate you. Look at that, number three is another skateboarding game. It's the demo for Skate, the game that more or less turkey slapped the fading Tony Hawk series completely out of existence. Prior to the release of the demo, it was entirely unknown how Skate's bold analog stick controls and more grounded approach to skateboarding would translate to a game. Would it work? How was the team who normally brought the world need for speed games going to pull this off? There were doubts. These doubts were shattered by this demo. The demo for Skate gave players their first taste of the organic simplicity of Skate's controls, and was their first introduction to a world of skating that focused on realistic tricks in a believable environment filled with natural lines. Make another Skate game, EA! Number two is the most recent demo on the list, and certainly the cleverest. Welcome to the Stanley Parable demonstration. The Stanley Parable demo isn't a slice of the actual game itself, rather it's an entirely standalone exercise designed to prepare you for the unique player and narrator relationship that forms the core of the Stanley Parable experience. Did you know that 94% of all people who select that particular button are sexual predators? A parody of demos in general, the bulk of what the Stanley Parable demo has to say is best left to see for yourself. Just as the Stanley Parable proper is a twist on player expectations of what makes a video game, the demo is a playful deconstruction of what makes a video game demo. This isn't the Stanley Parable. 
This is a game where you press a button and it says 8. Now, number one and the greatest video game demo ever, well, of course, it's the now legendary demo for Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. Even the Stanley Parable agrees, and if you can't believe that a great demo about demos knows great demos, who can you believe? Too true. Much like the demo for the original Metal Gear Solid, the Metal Gear Solid 2 demo starts at the beginning of the game, and lets players pick their way through a hefty segment of the game's introductory level. Unlike the demo for the original, however, there's actually far more gameplay on offer. There's soft porn to find, boxes to hide in, pumpkins to shoot, and sleeping soldiers to unceremoniously dump into the Hudson River. A first playthrough of this demo could take over an hour and even longer if you wanted to experiment more and mug all the guards for their precious dog tags and any goodies they can shake out of their trousers. They certainly don't make demos like this anymore, but when they do, they just charge you 50 Earth dollars for them. Damn! Or at least they do in Australia. For more great games content and body disposal tips, check out IGN.